Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. The documentary Calling All Earthlings explores the Integraton, which is a mid-century dome in the Mojave Desert. It's actually uh, pretty near Joshua Tree National Park, and it was created by one-time Howard Hughes confidant, George Van Tassel, and Van Tassel claimed to have combined extraterrestrial guidance with the work of Nikola Tesla and other alternative scientists to build this electromagnetic time machine he called the Integratron. Nancy and I have been there. It's very odd. It's one of those places <laughs> that um, should be in a movie. So I'm really glad that this is out right now, calling all Earthlings. Um, and it's, it's really fascinating because even the FBI is part of it. I mean, there's all kinds of stories that circulate around it and um, it's just one of those fascinating places you can go there today and um, go in this dome building and have a sound bath and Nancy and I did that many years ago when we were out there and we actually used to live out there so very excited to have filmmaker Jonathan Berman join us here on Big Glen Radio today to talk about his latest project again calling all earthlings it's out now on VOD and in theaters and the best thing to do is go to their website calling all earthlings movie.com Jonathan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me today. And we're excited about this. Uh, Nancy and I, you know, watched this and we're like, we know that place. We know of it over here, but it's um, you really <laughs> grasp the essence of there's like a there's like, I want to say mystical quality of the high desert, but there's something that you know there's something else somewhere. Like there's it's just a place of when someone says that they may have had an alien sighting, you kind of go, yep, yeah, but be then, the yeah, desert. it could happen, you know, <laughs> especially with the military base being so close. You never know. Is that, you know, is that a UFO or is, is that the military? It's a fascinating mm. place. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. What drew you to calling all earthlings and deciding to cover the Integratron? And how did you find out about the Integratron to begin with? Well, you know, I've always been a seeker. Um, when I was a little kid, my family took me to do TM. Oh, and okay. <laughs> so I've always had that quest for something beyond uh, the earth, like knowing more, being curious. And also, um, I'm, I, my work seems to revolve around these third places, the places that aren't your home or aren't your work. And it's an anthropological con concept of the third place, the bowling alley, mm -hmm. the, um, the uh, bar or the Russian baths, in the case of my first film, another kind of semi-secret, semi-mystical place. Mm -hmm. um, so I was drawn to it in that I saw a picture of the dome in um, this wonderful book uh, called Spiritual Landscape about California by Eric Davis and Michael Rauner. And uh, in this uh, book of photos, I just saw this kind of Gothic dome mm -hmm. in the, perched in the desert with a sign on its side that said, you know, uh, uh, for basic research into life extension whoa so i, I would, like, I would go out just for that yeah i've got to exactly. go to that and by the way if any of your listeners decide to go please reserve in advance oh yeah Neil hauser made the dome very popular over a decade <laughs> and, ago he warned them uh, and i'll i'll say you've got you got to reserve now yeah and through through the, through their website. Too, and got to drink you out of the, the sun bath bowl <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah, at the end. You've got to watch the end. They had cocktails, like at the end of Anthony Bourdain. At the Bourdain's end of that cocktail. episode? Yeah, I remember that. Oh, with Anthony Bourdain, Bourdain you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, with Bourdain. And Hill Hauser used to live out there in 29 Palms, in, near, near mm -hmm. there. And maybe Good, so he knew the hours. It wasn't one of those episodes where, well, it looks like the dome's closed today. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but I know they've gained popularity. When we first went there, it was when the two sisters had first taken it over. And to me, it was very fascinating about walking in and seeing how he built this without, I mean, it's a dome, but no nails and, and that it was going to like vibrate up and go like it could be like a little spaceship and go off. And it was just so like, that's amazing in itself. And I think it's fascinating. I, mean, I look back at Buckminster Fuller and him creating oh, yeah. the geodesic dome. And then I was telling Nancy, I was doing some work this morning and looking at Palomar Mountain and looking at the observatory and I'm going okay there's a connection between all of these things and where did where did it come from really who really started it <laughs> the idea mm. wow you bring up so many great points 
Mm. You know, um, first of all, just as a piece of earth art, I think the dome is exceptional. Um, uh, installation art, you know, um, mm. environmental art. So um, it's just beautiful. And yeah, you're supposedly on a space that um, has ley lines and a certain energy, which we talked about earlier. So the desert has this mm. energy that's unbelievable and there's no light pollution. You can really see into the cosmos. And when you, when you go back into the history of um, California and science, these uh, people who first started the observatories like um, Mount Wilson, and mm -hmm. um, they were uh, the young men, and they were men of science, whose fathers were typically clergy. So there's always been this really interesting connection between those interested in the spiritual or even the religious and this new wave, <laughs> the new wave of, a, of the late 19th century, I guess. Um, so it definitely does echo the planetarium, the observatory, the shape. Yeah, you know, that's really interesting. And, and knowing that you also, um, you know, know all about TM and have practiced it and also going back into uh, your documentary, Commune, Sorry. what I find is really interesting because, you know, we've covered a lot on TM. In fact, um, a lady was on our show, wrote a few years, oh, a year ago, and uh, she traveled the world with the Maharishi and um, wrote a, doc, uh, a memoir about it, which is insane. They went around the world and how TM spread out and how he knew that you needed to publish educational materials, and that's what her husband did. And um, it, was, it was just really, really fascinating. And we've had a number of, there's a university, I think it's up in Ohio, and a mm -hmm. number of them come on our shows over the years. And it's fascinating to me. TM is just really, really fascinating how you can build your brain and they've done scientific proof on it. And, but the fact is going into how the Maharishi knew that we needed pamphlets, we needed education, and he spread that out. And then watching George Van Tassel doing a very similar thing of we need to publish literature that goes out and brings people here. So there's right. this communal thing going on, but then also the meditation part in there. So I'm like, dude, this I had no idea about that, man. That's <laughs> that's trippy. <laughs> it's way you, trippy. You know, I love your comments. You're bringing out all the really professorial, interesting things um, that I love to talk about. Um, my other life is as a professor at California State University in San Marcos, which okay, you know, also, yeah. has that, also has that 760 area code and just separated by some mountains and you head over to the desert. Um, and so um, as a professor, um, I would um, also connect these to the other experiments in spirituality of a distinctly American sort. Um, there was the woman in Echo Park who was a 1920s preacher. I was mm -hmm. just watching some footage of her. I'll, 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 I'll think of her name earlier. And just um, that melding of capitalism and commercialism and spirituality is fascinating. And certainly TM figured that out, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's good. You got to find a way to pay your rent, too, you know. Well, he said that, I mean, Maharishi said that you had to um, be sustainable. And that's, that's right. why lessons cost and, and teachers get paid to teach TM, is that you had to have that level of sustainability. And so, you, mm -hmm. you know, that it was interesting. He had, a, he had a system of value. And I thought, well, that's, that's an interesting thing because just because you're meditating doesn't mean you're going woo woo off into the clouds. You know? Right. <laughs> and, and your point refers, you know, directly to George Van Tassel who set up the College of Universal Wisdom and sent out these beautiful pamphlets that described his theories and the work, you know, the progress they were doing on the dome. It was the newsletter that was mailed to the faithful and the curious um, and the supporters. And uh, it reminds me of Ray Johns Johnson, who's a Amer great American artist who also did a lot of mail art. You know, that whole mail art world of the 50s and 60s. Cool. where you'd mm -hmm. mail something to someone and they'd mail something back. You know, it, it, this is also interesting about the domes because then I go into like Encinitas, Encinitas, California. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. The, the Self-Realization Fellowship Center and the domes because it's yeah. very like Taj Mahal Indian mm -hmm. style, these domes, right? And so you've got that going on and then, you know, Joshua Tree is just not that far away but it is an crest line, 
that's not that far in the San Bernardino Mountains outside uh, mm -hmm. Big Bear. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. going off and finding an old commune, Nancy, that was <laughs> no, and it was like a building that was very <laughs> similar to the Taj Mahal, and and like mm. it, and it was closed off, and it was it, the commune was no longer, and it was just like this beautiful building that was just very Moroccan in style, but also with domed like out in the middle of the middle but, of that. That but, was and it was weird. I had like the trippy vibes, man. I got goosebumps out there. That, isn't the the dome thing like I, I think there's a a Greek church that has a dome near mm -hmm. Encinitas and when the sun hits a certain way it forms the sunlight hits the dome at a certain time, it forms a cross of light. Hmm. This and is very um, you guys must have uh, some kind of extrasensory perception because, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I lived in Encinitas when I first moved, uh, landed in California um, oh, wow. and love Encinitas and mm -hmm. Encinitas and that particular location of the SRF of Self-Realization Fellowship where Yogananda came to the U.S. Again, one of the first you know people to bring the East to the West. Um, in that place was where Daniel Boone, who's a figure in the film, he's a subject of yeah. the film, he's an old gentleman with a beard, mm -hmm. and he was one of Yogananda's first disciples oh, wow. as a young, as like an 18-year-old. Um, and Yogananda, at one point, told him to go see the man in the desert. Wow. And he, he didn't know what that meant. And then a book comes in the mail, and it's Van Tassel's book. He's like, oh, this is the man in the desert. Moves to the, goes to the desert, blows out every tire on his car with his friend, and they wind up finding Van Tassel, and he marries one of Van Tassel's daughters and helps him <laughs> over the over the years in building that dome. And he he's, he's very much a believer to this day. I mean, from watching him in in the film, that you know, and he goes into the fact that like the government and here's the military base. I think it's the largest you know military base we have here. Um, in the country, the 29 Palms uh, military base is a is one I believe one of the largest U.S. Um, installations mm -hmm. in the world. Like yeah, it's it, 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 I mean, ground. you could feel them, you know, bomb. And um, there's just I don't know. There's just there's trippy things out there. That's all I'm going to say. And it's trippy cool. Um, <laughs> but right, and there's you know the people who live out there who who are featured in the film. And I, I guess you could say I'm as much of an anthropological filmmaker in more of a casual way that as, as anything else. Um, the people, the community that lives out there, and, and it's a community of, you know, it's a gradual Marxist community, like anyone who take me as a member, I won't join. So everybody's uh, an individualist, you know? But they all, um, a number of people that believe they're balancing out the negative energy of the military mm -hmm. tests. You know, there is something there because we knew when we lived there, we noticed that all the birds, because we feed the birds in our garden, had lumps mm -hmm. around their, their bills. And oh, my like, gosh. Yeah. And we're like, is this because we're by the military? We wondered, yeah. <laughs> we really wonder still. It's so interesting because as a, as a community, the Grady community, I mean, when you think about, uh, you know, George Van Tassel, you think about the Integratron, right? Then mm -hmm. you've got the Joshua Tree Retreat Center, which is all about mental physics. And right. So you've got that. <laughs> that helps, you know. And 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 then you, it's kind of interesting how Yucca Valley is kind of like the bedroom community, but you go up to the rocks and you got Pioneer Town and Pappy and Harriet's and like awesome kick-ass music up there. Then you've got on the other part of it, you've got like Twenty Nine Palms, the military town. And then Joshua Tree is like the hippie town, you know what I mean? And these balances, but they're all connected by the land, no matter how you look at it. And the military base stretches and touches just about everything, really. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating. And there are just right. different vibes. And every I don't know, it's kind of like everybody's, like, I don't know, they, it manages to work for some reason. And you wouldn't think it would, but it does. It does work in ways that how people connect and, and get along and I think people just give each other more space to be strange you know it's okay I think you're right strange, you know individual that's yeah. the individual yeah original 
Be yourself. You know, and I don't even know if we got into the real nuts and bolts of this, of what is the Integratron that we talked about. Oh, yeah, we that. should. Go for it. You, 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 you okay. explain. Um, <laughs> you know, um, the, well, it's a uh, building a machine. It was supposed to be a machine. It was never turned on. 38 feet tall in Landers, California, which is not far from the town of Joshua Tree. Um, and it was supposedly um, inspired by and, and um, developed by visitors from Venus who met this gentleman, George Van Tassel, in the desert um, in the early 50s. And the machine would act as a life rejuvenator as well as um, have the same technology that could be used for free energy. And um, George worked on this for years using a, a lot of principles that included Tesla and the scientist uh, George mm -hmm. Lakowski. And in 1978, after 20 something years, it was almost like a biblical quest for him, like building an ark, you know. Um, he was on his way to an interview and supposedly gonna turn it on like very uh, in a, in a, like in a few days, and he died mysteriously. Mm -hmm. So that's the story of the Integratron. Along the way, it became like Tom Sawyer's fence a little bit. He attracted Daniel Boone and other supporters. People moved to the desert for the hope of life extension. Um, yeah, it's a wild yeah. story. <laughs> and and yet around the corner, there's the Fountain of Youth at the Salton Sea. And everybody would go there thinking that they were going to get younger from the water, believe it or not. I Is that right? I from the Salton Sea? Yeah. I think I never, somewhere in the museum that. that they have by the Integratron, there was something that that he wrote about the Venusians said we only really had eight different kinds of cells mm -hmm. in our bodies. And it just, and we just... <laughs> and they just kept multiplying. Yeah, it's a, and, and the, huh. part of the... There was like something was stolen from the two girls when when we first went there. They were talking about like a lot of this stuff was gone, and they thought it was in Hawaii or something. Oh, and like some oh. pe his stuff got stolen, and he had like a rejuvenation machine that would rejuvenate your cells. And they're like, there's eight cells, yeah, main like your nucleus cells, and right. that developed everything. And right. you can the, the, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. So the entire thing. dome was the machine, right? It was the top no, half of the dome. No, but there was another one. Oh, another okay. machine, like a right, like there, a thing a that you could step in or yeah, portable. Yeah. Huh. Well, there's the multiple wave oscillator, which was from Lakowski, oh, okay. and that used hmm. the Tesla coil um, to generate electromagnetic frequencies, and the idea was that this electromagnetism would um, resonate with your cell frequency and recharge it like a le an electrical battery. So you're saying that some of this material, the science, uh, if not the actual devices, wound up in Hawaii. Something like that. She, that's what she was saying, something that they didn't know, but when they got there, some of the stuff was gone. So that's oh. interesting because we one of our first screenings of the film was in Maui at the film festival, and I met a bunch of folks who um, at the Maui Cultural Center. Some of the older folks had actually met Van Tassel. Wow. And okay, that's some of them, yeah, and some of them lived on the Rainbow Bridge, which was where Jimi Hendrix played his concert and was a commune and is, I think, still. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> they. Everything connected man <laughs> oh if i had known we could have tracked down this device you'll have to tell me more but well, as a filmmaker i mean this is just like gold you know i it's know so man when, this is so much fun what you did and now you've got one of the, one of the the gentlemen in your film um that helped you um was out building domes as well like dome houses and was that out in wonder valley or landers where they're building these <laughs> like i was like wonder valley anything can happen there Wonder Valley and Landers need to get along. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard about Wonder Valley, and that's a new frontier, right, for, for people who, who who are moving a further, is that east, I mm -hmm. think, right? Yeah, that, it's on the, it's like if you go east on 62 out of um, 29 Palms, you'll get there. And it's one of the places where the Homesteading Act came in, and that's part of what, you know, the land for uh, Van Tassel, where people would get a piece of land and those mm -hmm. little, you know, homesteading cabins. 
Um, you're right. they call them just, doll houses. I think they said if you you could buy a plot of land for five thousand dollars, but you had to construct something right away. Yeah. So people made these. We call them doll houses because they're so tiny. Um, doll houses, and they called them also jackrabbit shacks. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer to your question, um, um, I, one of the things I wanted to get across in the film which I see you're, you guys are infected with, is a sense of road spirit and road trip and road mm -hmm. traveling. Mm -hmm. And that did happen. This guy, Jackson, came passing through and I met him and they were, him and his two friends were there to build uh, domes through Cow Earth, which is this amazing program in Hesperia yeah. where they teach you how to build um, from just barbed wire and... Um, um, just really basic elements. And the idea is you can build shelter in um, poor and war-torn areas. So it was a brilliant um, project mm. of um, by Nad Nadir Kalili. Kal it's called Super Adobe Building. So everyone should take that. So what I loved in this story is that the dome, which never operated as a rejuvenation machine, or I would have been, I would have jumped in it. Um, yeah. the, the dome um, means so many different things to different people. There's a great photograph of it. I can't remember where I saw it unless it was with the lightning. The, yeah, with the lightning yeah. bolt going towards the dome. That was their first yes. media kit yeah. that they handed out. They had to give a folder and it had that on there and I was like, I want that photo. That's yeah. so, cool. so cool. And that goes <laughs> and that's interesting because of when you think about that, the whole thing goes into the electricity part. And that was the other story of this is having like it, it's crazy it's like having you know an electric force flow without getting zapped if, i'm trying to make it into something my brain can handle <laughs> like, but well, george is going to be the first one to go through it with his wife on his back yeah. um just oh. to, to make sure that it really worked wow <laughs> that's crazy and so that part of it is where some like daniel boone was talking about people didn't want that to happen because of now we're creating some free form of electricity. You know, it's like what we're still battling with solar in this world to have solar be what it should That's be. That's really fascinating. And one of the things that I've been thinking of recently in talking about the film a lot is this kind of tenuous relationship between the feds and the mm -hmm. localities. Mm -hmm. And George talks about that in the interview that's featured in the film. He talks about that saying, well, we're, we're so far away. I mean, the sheriff's 30 miles away and I have to go to a phone five miles away to contact him and he's one guy. And um, So there's definitely a lot of mistrust of the federal government and concern about conspiracy by cabals and, and stuff like that. And certainly, you know, uh, you I would be pretty sure that uh, Morgan and his ilk did want to put a meter on it, you know? Mm -hmm. and you, so can't, you, you can't charge for free energy. Hmm. And that's the fight we're having with solar. Like that whole, it, mm -hmm. it's, it, and it just goes into everything. There's so many, like I feel like this is the beginning of a series. I'm just saying, Jonathan, <laughs> because there's, <laughs> so many pieces to this that reflect what's going on in the now as well. Um, I also thought it was very interesting in uh, bringing in the Morongo Indians um, and having them, uh, you had Ernest on there talking about the connection for the Native Americans, which now we're talking, you know, ancient times, you know, they're our first people. And yeah, Ernest Siva was really nice. Um, uh, and he relayed um, the origin story of, of his peoples, the Mor Morongo band. And it was very matter of fact about it. I mean, you know, yeah. the the story was that there was a hole through time and space that that came in at Twenty Nine Palms, and that that his people were descended from space people, mm -hmm. and the Earth people are. Um. So I, I certainly wouldn't doubt it. Maybe that's why the military base is there. Yeah, there's something out there, man. You go. There's it's something. Like somebody's there's like, you know, everybody knows the secret, but nobody's telling. I know. It's like there's like this internal vibe of like, you know, deep down, this is, you, how can you not believe that there's things, to me, it's like we, we tend as human beings wanting to live in this little, the little boxes thing, you know, made out of ticky tack. That's where in these little, 
shells and we don't want to look out, you know, and have a greater perception that really there's more than between your four walls. I love about this third place part of what you talk about and, and, and what your films represent because it's leading people to go beyond, you know, the four walls of our mind. I mean, if you look, our heads are round, not square. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. I am your guy's new favorite fan. I love I love um, <laughs> the way you talk about what's out there, and I want to listen to every show. <laughs> so. I, think, I think the aliens, if we can call them that, which is kind of silly because they're probably right. here before us anyway, so we might be the aliens. Well, well, we are they, and it's it's just an othering that, that's yeah. going on. I think they're going to come down here, and they're going to say, would you stop polluting outer space, too? Mm. Just well, stop that's it. funny that you say that because that was, you know, you see it in films from the 50s and and George is no exception. His channelings were originally from from beings who told him that, hey, the, your atomic stuff, you don't know what you're doing with it and you're going to fill up the universe. And that's why they originally came, according to George and uh, Adamsky, cool. the other George, George Adamski and a lot of other people. Um, mm. This was the. uh a raison d'etre, if I could speak bad French here, um, reason, uh, the rationale for them coming here oh. at that period. And, and, a, and I think now. A, a period of hope right. and of fear, you know, like, God, for Micah, and we have everything, TV and all kinds of great new inventions and atomic power and atomic bombs. And, uh, yeah. It, yeah, that's it. And then, okay, so reptiles are like our most ancient dinosaur beings, right? Oh, the lizard people. The lizard people. Okay, so then we get into that. But <laughs> Okay, I don't get that crazy, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, people. well, think about the desert and how we have like good, seriously just, good reptiles out there. We interviewed a psychic who told us that there were dragon people, yeah. the lizard people, yes, in the center of the earth. Yes. <laughs> so I think there's a well watch ancient aliens you know there's okay. there's a connection and all and you know sometimes when you you just hang out next to a lizard and you look in the lizard's eyes Jim Morrison's going to come back okay <laughs> but when you look at his <laughs> eyes there is a connection just like when you look at an animal and you can communicate with animals without talking to them there's a connection that that I think that, you know, hey, why not have these ancient beings? They've, they've got the stories just like the rocks. Now, let's go to giant rocks. I always call it big split rock, but... Um, People that's call it big rock, too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's this rock. So he used to... This is this giant rock. It's up on BLM land now, up near Landers. And see, this is interesting because if you take that road to Landers and you start going out, then it's like that snow to desert highway where if you're... You go through Lucerne Valley, and then next thing you know, you could get into Big Bear from there into that other place, man. There's something connected with that other common. You've got to go mm -hmm. find it, Jonathan. <laughs> I, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to like start Googling and checking out what we were looking at. But, um, I will. Because, you know, my a, last film was Commune, and that was about the exactly. Black Bear Ranch in Northern See, California. That, there's, yeah, so, there's so interested in, also in these communities uh, that form around these spaces. And if you go back in time, yeah, there's this huge boulder called Giant Rock, uh, supposedly meeting places of various um, American Indian groups, tribes. Mm. Then there's 29 Palms, and which was suggested to be the place where um, the spaceships came down, according to uh, Ernest Siva of the Morongo Band of Indians. And now you have a military base, and on the very border of it is this machine that's supposed to provide free energy. So there's a lot of fodder for, for wonderful um, imagination and also concern. Some people thought that, oh, maybe the dome is, is kind of a military-funded experiment. And certainly Howard Hughes crosses all these borders of military, mm -hmm. and commerce, and just plain weirdness and brilliance. Mm -hmm. and I found you, it. Uh, and Where George go? George Van Dassel worked for Howard Hughes and for Lockheed and for Douglas Aircraft. So. See, see, that's that's you know the, the aircraft people always pop up. Yes, in these things, like Douglas, JPL. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
they always crop up. And then, you know, our minds are always connecting dots because we, we have this theory of everybody being connected no matter who you think you are or where you come from. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and so you just try to think outside the box of what you've been taught all your life and you start making connections and sometimes you can see it and sometimes you can't. It just takes time. Hmm. That's interesting, man. Well, I remember the, when we were in Kenya and I was at an Aga Khan school to see the headmaster um, about putting Lisa in school. And um, one of the classrooms had drawings by the TM class, which was trying to levitate pineapples. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's different. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I just heard about this device that will take the center of the pineapple out. Did you say pineapple? <laughs> yes. And, yes. And we'll take the skin off. And I, I need, I'm Mr. Gadget, so I need that immediately. But levitating a pineapple, I would like to see that. Oh, my Me God. Too. Oh, I don't I know. Weirdest things, but that's what they uh, were attempting to do. Oh, weird okay. things, yeah. Okay, we could talk about weird things. Uh, one of the things I wanted to tell you that's that's a good thing is that the film uh, is going to be uh, on um, screens everywhere through iTunes on the 28th of August. And um, that is so also, cool. it's available on pre buy, which apparently is some kind of signal to the gods over there at, at Apple that they that they need to like tell people about the film even more so if somebody wants to see this film tonight or right now they can go onto itunes and and pre-buy it and have a copy and then please stay in touch with us through people of earth people of earth i keep going that was my original title and it was taken by a tv show <gasps> oh uh, well, people. it's calling all earthlings. Calling all earthlings. Com. Thank you. We just calling wrapped a one, one week com. shoot. Calling yeah. all earthlings movie dot com. Thank you. Yeah, we just wrapped a one week in um, uh, theatrical screening in New York, so it's been a wild ride um, showing the film in Harlem, which is amazing right now. That's cool. Very cool. I'm so glad that you did this. And like I said, I, I see a series, and um, we have oh, to say well, we were thrilled to see. Eric Burton in there too. Yeah, you know, he's he's oh, we like love a, Eric. he's he's like he's one awesome. of the best in the world, and he's got an awesome album out of that he wrote um, probably about ten years now, uh, Water. And uh, mm -hmm. I encourage huh. people to get that. Um, I have get, to get that. Eric yeah, it is. He is he is amazing. Um, the other thing I did I do want to just tell you real quick. I found what that building was. It's called the Pillars of God. <laughs> yes. And it's true because they have pillars going in a circle. And um, you can find it on Facebook. You can it's find like it, and you can go see it. It looks like a, it looks like it could be part of the SRF. It, it looks like the little miniature Taj Mahal. And, it's and this is near Arrowhead. Yeah, Temple of Christ. Yes, in Crestline, California. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so there you go. Yeah, just I because when we were watching this, not started seeing connect. There's like a connecting of dots in that whole region, and um, the, I find that fascinating. That it's so well, close. It's just over the hill. Yes. If you think of it that way and from the Atigatron. Yeah. It's and there's another commune south of that, too. Anyway. You know, <laughs> you know, these, these, these road tripping journeys, I just wanted to tell you when I first got to Joshua Tree with my little portable camera and my half built cheapo rental house, um, people were like, look, you got to talk to Charlene. She was the local mystic before we before right. you before we will talk to you for your movie. You know, I was like the outsider. And yeah. now this long journey, many years, <clears throat> the film is done and getting out there. And I'm so happy that we're also showing the film in First World in Joshua Tree in September, which is this oh, amazing. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Bobby oh, First is an artist, um, has this amazing um, venue. So. I definitely felt at home in that community. It was a question of when you look at all these mythic structures when you make your films, it's like, oh, you you get the magical potion and then do you bring it back to the ordinary world? In other words, do I return to Los Angeles and become go back to being the city guy, or do I just stay out in this magical world? Well, now you sound like Glen Tassel. <laughs> like you're gonna have yeah. to go live under a rock. <laughs> and open a cafe so we can have good burgers. You know, living under have... a rock is very smart because when it's that hot out, you have a very um, wonderful uh, climate down there. See, and then he communed with the reptiles. I'm telling you, that's what it is. Oh, there was a reptile <laughs> thing. Yeah, they were good. They were good. They tr they rejuvenated a reptile, according to that's... George and Daniel. Wow, that's very cool. Well, thank like you they, so uh, much not... for. Go ahead. Of course. 
I was going to say, they didn't rejuvenate the reptile. According to Daniel and George, they brought a reptile back to life. So yeah. there. Hmm. Okay, hmm. reptile spirit. Now I feel good. This is, this is cool. This is mm -hmm. fascinating. And I just love to have that you had track these people that are still very connected, that are, that were there as part of the history, you know, and that you could get their stories. I mean, because I think, you know, that's, that's, mm -hmm. we lose stories all the time when people don't go and follow that, that vibe to do something. And I'm glad you followed that. You, Thank you. Gotta you. Yeah, it was, the vibe. it was a great vibe. And just circling back to what we first spoke about, the third space, um, this, this third space, um, that I'm interested in is the counterculture third space, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, the, the mall is the third place. I'm not as interested in the mall. Go, mm -hmm. That's my East Coast accent, the shopping mall, M-A-L-L. -L. Mm -hmm. um, but I am interested in the third place where the resonance of the people hits my resonance. It, it changes. And without getting too woo-woo. You are woo -woo. different, you are different when you're at work. You're different when you're at home. But when you go out, like if you go out partying, you go to a nightclub and dance, you've now changed from, you've trans, there's a transformation that happens. There's a transformation yeah. and there's, there's a crowd energy and there's mm. a movable energy that certainly the Grateful Dead work with. Somebody told me this term and it refers to that spirit of the energy like in a performance between the performer and the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was, that was happening and continues to happen in, in communities um, based upon something beyond a uh, profit with an F, mm -hmm. maybe more related to profit with a PH. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go to the, isn't it called the Wonder Bar? No, the Palms Head. The Palms, the, that the bar on, Palms Head in it, Wonder Valley. Yeah, you got to go there next time you go there. In, in You're the second person to say that this week. Okay, we got to go there. Yeah, yeah we got to go there. Why don't all the listeners the of your show place. come to the, either either get the pre the pre buy and or come to the first world screening and then we'll all do a field trip okay we'll party like we'll go out no there's cool <laughs> stuff out there we gotta we'll go, go hiking and we gotta go down yeah. to 66 that's what we gotta do to find all there's, the weirdness there's so many cool stories off uh, off of there highway 62 and um joshua tree park itself that um you could be busy forever i just hope you keep following and doing like an like a series from this like i really go find the fountain of youth <laughs> just up the road just, I would you, love know, to. you know so that would be awesome again everyone calling all earthlings movie.com is the place to go and out on video on demand uh starting august 28th and uh we want to thank jonathan for joining us it's been a real pleasure we also uh, want to thank our sponsor today the national parks arts foundation uh we do a, a, a first friday art show with them every every first friday at 11 a.m pacific time 2 p.m eastern we interview one of their artists and residents that uh, stay in a national park for a month and create. So check it out. Go to nationalparksartsfoundation.org. Also, uh, everyone, Big Blend Radio airs Sunday through Friday. You can check it all out. Just go to bigblendradio.com. You'll see our outlets there and schedule so you can listen as shows go live or anytime later on demand. And uh, we've got a special song for you, Jonathan. Oh, um, wonderful. Thank, thank you for today. You guys are fantastic. The national parks are fantastic and should be expanded. Joshua mm -hmm. Tree is known for its beautiful national park. And keep yeah, doing the great work you do. Thank you. You too. And here it is, everybody. Indrid Cold. It is all about the Mothman. Because <laughs> we got to bring <laughs> we got to bring the insects in too. Uh, this is from the album Never Trust the Living by Johnny Mastro and the Mama's Boys. And you can go to johnnymastro.com. But here it is. Indrid Cold. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> 